hi i'm back sorry about that i got distracted so i was talking about john 1 1 i was saying that people will use this to try to say that there is a trinity but i'm gonna read it how it's supposed to be read in the beginning was the word we all know that was jesus so it says in the beginning was jesus that means he always existed he wasn't created and the word was with Elohim. Remember what Elohim means. Elo Jesus was with Elohim, the congregation of God up there in heaven. He was with them. And the word was Elohim. So he was also Elohim. He was with Elohim and he is also Elohim. So that means he was with God and he is also God. Remember, Elohim doesn't mean one thing. It means the assembly of God. He is the assembly of God and he is in the assembly of God. You see what I'm saying? We are Elohim and we will be part of the Elohim when Jesus comes back and gives us a new body. So like I said, the Trinity, it says three in one. God is three in one. The Bible never says that because, again, I'm going to keep repeating myself until it gets in your head. We are part of the Elohim when Jesus comes back. You see what I'm saying? The angels are also called Elohim because Elohim is plural, meaning the assembly of God. Elohim doesn't mean one being. Elohim is not God. They translate it as God, but Elohim is the whole assembly of God. Remember, the Father doesn't have a specific name. Only Jesus came to tell us who he is. We did not know the Father until the Son came to reveal him. Okay, so John 1.1 1, 1 actually proves the opposite there's no trinity you know jesus is god but he is part of the elohim jesus is not his own father we don't worship a schizophrenic god with three different personalities that's not what the bible says now psalm 82 1 and 6 it says elohim stands in the congregation of el Remember, El is the singular word for Elohim, but it doesn't mean it's talking about the Father. El could just be talking about one person in the Elohim. Remember, there's many, many, many creatures part of the Elohim. It's not three in one. Y'all need to get that out of your head. That's why y'all not being blessed with the truth because y'all believe in a lie. He judges in the midst of the Elohim. And then Psalm 6, I say you are Elohim. It's talking about us. And all of you are the sons of the Most High. Now, this is my Bible, the Scripture's Bible. Let's see what the King James says. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among, amongst the gods. Well, for people that say God is only three in one, so who are the other gods he's talking about? He's talking about the whole congregation, angels, the creatures. That's what he's saying. How? Let's keep going. I have said, ye are gods. He's talking about us. We are gods. Not technically in this world. Don't be getting my words messed up. Is this Jesus? Is this coming from Jesus? Not me. It says, I have said ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. So if God was a trinity, a tree, tri, means three and one, but if we are included and the angels are included at the, as this Elohim, I'm not very good at math, but wouldn't that be more than three? Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Messianic Bible. That was sarcasm. God presides in the great assembly. So you see how they translated the congregation of El 
in the Messianic Bible says the great assembly. He judges among the gods. You see what it's saying? It's saying that the Father, God, well, it could be talking about Jesus also. Jesus and the Father, they, they preside in the great assembly and they are the rulers of the other gods, the other angels. See what I'm saying? It's the Father. The Father gives all authority to Jesus. Why? Because the Father is holy, holy, holy. He needs his high priest to rule over the creatures. See what I'm saying? Because God is so holy, holy. He cannot be with his creation. His creation is not good enough to be in his presence. See what I'm saying? So then Jesus... He's sitting in that throne right next to his father. He's ruling, he's ruling over the other gods, meaning angels. See what I'm saying? So, you know, this is pretty simple. I don't know why, you know, I shouldn't have to read all of these notes. It should be, it should be really self-explanatory. A normal thinking person that reads their Bible, don't get me wrong, if you're not, you know really good at reading your bible then i can see but anybody that reads their bible anybody that's been christian 20 years and y'all still believe in the trinity these verses that i read right now or before and you know my, just watching my part one that should already tell you that it's not three and one because your perception of what god means is not true you know when you read god you think it's one being but it's really elohim Hey, let's move along to Genesis 2, verses 2 through 4. And the seventh day, God Elohim, this is the new Messianic Bible. I'm just reading this to let y'all know how they translate it. I don't really read the new Messianic Bible, but I just like to compare, compare, compare. I like using the Jewish Bibles, the older Bibles, you know, I don't know how to read the Hebrew. Remember I told you, the simple can understand God's word. You don't need to be a scholar, you know, a, a learned person. You can be, you know, average, not knowing anything, barely being able to read. Just by listening God's word, you know, you should understand it. So, okay. On the seventh day, God Elohim, the living word, the many powered, ending his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God Elohim, the Messiah pre-incarnate. This is what they're saying. They're saying that Messiah or Jesus was already here when he blessed the seventh day. This was all the way in Genesis. The seventh day of creation, actually. Okay, so they're saying blessed means favored by God, happy, prosperous, the seventh day, and sanctified it because that in that he had rested from all his work, which God Elohim, the living word, the creator, created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and on the earth when they were created in that day that the Lord Jehovah, Messiah, pre-incarnate. You see how they said Lord Jehovah. I'm here to tell y'all that. The father, that's his name, the father. We don't know his true name, like I said. We can only know him as the Elohim, but that's plural. El is still not his name. So anytime you hear, you know, God's name in the Bible, that was really talking about Jesus. Jesus was the one talking in the Old Testament. I'm not sure if I described that already, but that's a fact. And... You know, Jehovah, Yahweh, I am that I am. Any those words is talking about Jesus. So God Elohim, the living word of God, made the earth and the heavens. So you see how they say it. Now let's see how the King James says it. And on the seventh day, God, instead of God Elohim, said the seventh day, God handed 
his work which he had made and rested on the seventh day on his work which he had made and god blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in that day he had rested from all his work which god created and made these are gener the, gen uh, the generation of the heavens and the earth when they were created in that day that the lord god made the earth and the heavens remember whenever it says lord period in the bible it's talking about jesus 99.9999 percent out of the times is talking about jesus when it's saying god is really supposed to be elohim it could be talking about anybody but mostly it's going to talk about jesus and the father together remember god created through jesus i don't know if i went through that but i will in the future god created through jesus so then Every time Jesus is talking, is on behalf of the Father. And he, you know, not that he's present, but he's basically speaking. And then Jesus is saying what he's saying. So, and then when it says the Lord God, that's talking about also both of them. See what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to read between the lines and you got to figure out. It's not that hard. You can figure out, okay, who are they talking about? Are they talking about Jesus alone or are they talking about the Elohim, which is the father and Jesus together as a family? Remember, we would not speak. We never spoke directly to the father. It was always Jesus on behalf of the father. Now, let's see how the scripture says this verse. And Elohim blessed the seventh day and set it apart. Because of it, he rested from all his work, which Elohim in creating had made. These are the births of the heavens of the earth when they were creating. That day that the Lord Elohim made earth and the heavens. So, you know, I had um, already recorded this video. It was choppy. I get, I kept getting interrupted. So, I just had to start over. But when I was saying, in the scriptures Bible, when you see this, this is talking about Jesus. This is Jesus the whole time. And then you said, when they say Elohim, it's talking about the Father, Jesus talking through the Father is always Jesus. Let's not get confused. It's always Jesus. But when you see this alone, it's only Jesus talking. And then when you see Elohim, they mostly say Elohim when it's like talking about creation. And that day, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. They're saying Elohim because it was both God and Jesus that created the earth. But then when it said, you know, and Moses saw the Lord, it's talking about Jesus. We never seen the father. So then, so then, so then this symbol, when it's, when it's all together with Elohim, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's both of them together. So that's why, you know, it's important that we study the original words. You know, I don't like how they use God instead of Elohim, El, you know, that sign for G. That's why, I don't know if I said this already, but that's why people have trouble with the word Lord. They say it's made up, da, 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 da. Well, we have we needed some word to describe this word, right? So then the translators just chose the lord but then that makes it kind of confusing because you don't know if it's talking about the lord or it's talking about the elohim so people get really confused and then that's why you know before i learned what that means people always used to say to me why they use the lord why is it they use that word lord and not god who is this lord and then people were getting you know really upset about that but once you study it for yourself then you know why is because there's the Lord Jesus and then there's the Father. It's like if people only knew, but it's like the people that watch my video the whole way through, they're blessed and they're going to know the truth. People don't want to stay studying a video for two hours, taking notes, meditating on it. You know, I, I've been, you know, having to watch videos that are two hours long over and over just so I can get it. Who's going to do that? 
hardly anybody so when you see people you know studying as much as i do they're really god's people they really care for the truth there's people that they will argue up and down but they never even studied the word of god but then they're arguing with you that study all the time they're arguing with you saying that you don't know what you're talking about when you can't tell they barely even know what the bible says they're just putting out the arguments that their pastor says without even knowing mary but hey that's how the world is now john 6 57 as the living father sent me and i live because of the father so he who feeds on me shall live because of me so we see how Jesus says, the living father sent me. You see what I'm saying? So if there were three in one, you can't send the other of yourself. And he says he lives because of the father. If they were three in one, they would be equally, you know, equal in strength and everything. And he says, so he, so he who feeds on me shall live because of me. See what I'm saying? That's why we will become gods because we are being fed from him. Genesis 11, 7, come, let us go there and confuse their language. So they do not understand one another's speech. Now, you can debate this, but I put that there to show you that it was always Jesus and the father in the beginning okay and this is the way the the scriptures bible says it and okay when i hesitate and say the lord that's because the, this sign is coming up which means the lord and elohim Mind you, this is not alone. I'm not saying the Lord said. I'm saying the Lord Elohim said. Why? There, Because it's two of them. Remember, it's Jesus and Elohim, which is the Father. And I'm not going to call him the Father. You know, we remember, the Father has not been revealed. So they just call him God in the Bible or Elohim, which is the whole assembly of God. So in my Bible, it says... And the Lord Elohim says, see, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now let he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So we don't live forever. We are mortals. So you see how it says the Lord Elohim because it's both of them talking. They didn't just say the Lord. You know, they said the Lord God. Whenever it's saying the Lord God... That means it's both of them talking, Jesus and the Father. When it just says Lord, then it's talking about Jesus. When it's talking about Elohim, again, it could be talking about the whole assembly of God. It could be a little confusing if you're new to this, but, but once you study it, it will be quick. As it is 23 to 5, you have no other mighty ones against my face. So you see how mine says no other mighty ones, but I'm pretty sure King James says you shall have no other gods again, you know, before me. And mine says against my face. You do not bow down to them nor serve them for I, the Lord, your Elohim, am a jealous El. Visiting the crookedness of the fathers of the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. So you see, it was Jesus talking to Moses. It was never the father. Remember, no one has ever seen his shape or seen his or heard his voice. It was always Jesus communicating on behalf of the father. Now, I have a few ones that i can you know hopefully show that he's not three in one like i said i already explained i really don't really i feel like i shouldn't you know show verses showing that because i think i already proved that the elohim is not three in one god is not three in one why sorry to repeat myself 
but some people just need to get it. Why? Because Elohim means the whole congregation of God. We will be part of the Elohim when we get our new body. The angels, which is, I'm pretty sure more than two of them, more than three of them, all of them are also Elohim. Why? Because they are the sons of God. You see what I'm saying? God is a family. A family consists of the supreme loot, um, the supreme ruler, the father, and his son. Then more brothers and sisters added. You see what I'm saying? Now, 1 John 5, 6 through 8. This is the one that came by water and blood. Jesus Messiah, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit who, who bears witness because the spirit is the truth. I'm going to explain that the Holy Spirit is not a third person. You see how he's saying the spirit is the spirit of truth. A third God can be the spirit of truth. Because there are three who bear witness. The spirit and the water and the blood. And these three are in agreement. This was the scripture's Bible. Did, did y'all catch that? Did y'all miss something? Let's go to King James. What does King James say? For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, the blood, and these three are in agree in one. There's a difference between, and these three are one? Well, it depends how you think about it. It still means the same thing. And these three agree in one. That just means they, they agree. Doesn't mean they're one one body. Okay, the New Messianic Bible. Let's see how they say it. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. So if y'all didn't catch it. You see how some of these Bibles, especially the King James, you only find this in King James and maybe some of the older ones that were written around the King James. First of all, why did they add a whole verse? Remember, the Bible says do not add or take away. They added a whole verse. They added a part where it says this, there are three who, were, you know, who bear witness, the spirit, of, wait, no. The the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. But nowhere else does the Bible says that. It, does, it never says that in the original. So people will be fooled to, to think, oh, aha, this is one people will throw over and over that there's a trinity. Aha, there it says. It says the, the, the Spirit, the, the Son, and, you know, are three, and they... But that's not in the Bible. It's, it's in the King James. It's not in the other Bible. So it's really supposed to say, you know, um, there are three who, wear, who bear witness, the spirit, the water, and the blood. It should be just like that. When they said that the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one, that's not in the Bible. So if you, I'm pretty sure people will just ignore it. And say, you know, it's really meant supposed to be there, even though it's not in the original Bible. You see, people they will defend, defend what they believe, even if they have to make up some things. It's like it doesn't say that in the Bible. It only says that in the King James and maybe a, a couple other more. Every other Bible is gonna say that was never in the original manuscript. So it's like <sighs> I'm telling you, I read the King James, but the King James is not perfect. You know, we have to compare, 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 you know, because we don't know the original language. So the best thing to do is just compare, compare, because best believe you're going to find the answer in one of those Bibles. I'm not, you know, I love me the scriptures Bible, but, you know, I'm not going to just say I'm just going to stick to one Bible. That's the main Bible I use, but I still like to compare, compare, compare. It's like, I don't know why people, this is not, okay. And then when it says the spirit, the water, and the blood, these three agree on one. They're basically telling you that 
that these three are going to agree that you are a child of God. The spirit will let you know the water we are being baptized and the blood, you know, they will let us know these three agree in one. See what I'm saying? That's what it that's what it was saying. But when it starts to make up the father, the word, you, you know, that's not. Hey, I'm just letting y'all know. The Bible never says the father, the son and the Holy Ghost are three in one. When it does, it was made up. That's all I got to say. John 17, 21 and 26. So they so that they might be one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, so that they too might be one in us, so that the world might believe that you have sent me. First, like I said, Jesus says he wants us, us, all Christians, to be one, like he's one with the Father. One, he forgot to mention the Holy Spirit. Two, like I said, we will all be one. But that's not three in one. You see what I'm saying? If y'all don't get it, then there's probably nothing I can do for y'all. My people should already get it by now. And the esteem which I have gave me, I have given them. So they might be one as we are one. That's not three in one. That's like billions, quadrillions in one. I am dumb, you and me, so they might be perfected into one so that the world knows that you have sent me. I have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those who, whom you have given me might be with me where I am so that they might see my esteem which you have given me because you have loved me be because the before the foundations of the world. Oh, righteous Father, indeed the world did not know you, but I knew you. Huh? So how? You see what I'm saying? Jesus is saying the, the the world never knew the father. Why? Because he was hidden. It was always Jesus in the Old Testament. Wouldn't that be like the ultimate gag for the Jewish people? That they rejected Jesus. They reject Jesus, but it was Jesus the one they were talking to. The one that wrote the Torah. That's just too funny, man. You see... I don't feel sorry for people. Y'all rejected God. The same God I was talking to y'all the whole time. <laughs> wow. I had made I had made your name known to them and shall make it known. So that the love with which you love me might be in them. You see what I'm saying? Jesus, he tells us over and over. Y'all never seen the father. It was me. I came to reveal the father. Oh, well. John 14, 7, 11, and 17. If you have known me, you will have known my father too. From now on, you know him and have seen. Philip, Philip said to him, Master, show us the father and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, I have been with you so long and you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. And how do you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I'm in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak from myself. But the Father who stays in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Otherwise, believe the works that I do. The spirit of the truth whom the world is unable to receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him for he stays with you and shall be with you. That just has so many things, this verse. The one that I just want to explain to keep on the topic of the Trinity. So people, you know... There's also, you know, there's Trinitarians that believe God is three in one. And then there's Unitarians that believe that is only one, not three. And that Jesus is that one. They're saying that Jesus is, hey, I'm Jesus. You know, turns around, hey, I'm the father. That's in a way, 
in a way it is crazier than a trinity but in a way i kind of would have to give them some a little bit of tiny more credit than the trinity but in in a way it's that they're both trash just throw them in the garbage okay the reason unitarians believe that it's just jesus is because you know it does say there's one god you know but then you know how i said jesus is the god of the old testament it was always jesus so then they they figure that out wait the father you know because they still think that it was the father communicating it was never the father so they think well jehovah is jesus jesus says he was with us jesus said you know he was with moses so there is no father. It was always Jesus the whole time. Jesus is the father. There is no father. It's Jesus. It's only one. So you see why they think that. But it's still that wrong because, okay, Jesus was the one communicating the Old Testament. But then because of that, you just can't throw out the father in the garbage, huh? Then what about all the times where he says, the father sent me, you know, the father is greater. Y'all just going to ignore all of that? You see what I'm saying? The Trinity does acknowledge that they are they are two different people, Jesus and the Father. But because there's one God, they say, well, they're they're two, they, you know, they're different personalities, but still one being. They work as one. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the charmed symbol. I don't know if I said this already, but yeah, that's they're trying to make god into a trinity but that's really charmed if you you know study the witchcraft the charm people you know they are three different people three different personalities you know but they only work as one like if it's one of the charmed ones they have really no power on their own they have to be three of them so they could be one so <laughs> So that's what a trinity is. You believe in a charmed one. You are you're a witchcraft person if you believe in a trinity. I'm not going to sugarcoat things because this is why people believe the way they believe because there's not somebody harsh telling them the harsh truth. Well, you if you want to believe in a trinity, it's okay. God still loves us. God is everywhere. He doesn't he doesn't want us to be, you know, separated. He wants us to be all in no. He wants us to agree in one. So if this person is the Trinity and this person is Unitarian, he's not saying, well, it doesn't matter. We all love each other. We all, let's not create division. You can believe what you want. You can believe what you want. Let's all love each other. This is why people are the way they are. This is why people don't know anything because they don't care. They think it's okay to believe anything we want. So then, you know, this you know, division thing. Well, I don't know if God is a trinity. I'll just pick the most popular one because I don't want to create division. Huh? You know, I can't. I really can't. I'd rather just stick with people like me. I can't, I can't deal with those type of Christians. Okay, so before I get off track, I'm sorry. So, people will try to show this. And say, aha, uh -huh. Jesus says that, that he's in the Father. And when you've seen the Father, you see him. <laughs> That's not what it means. <laughs> That's not what it means. Okay. Okay, I'm, a, I'm just going to use the same example so it could get stuck in your head. Okay, the Jesus wasn't saying that he's the Father. That when, you, when you're looking at the Father, you're looking at him. That's not what he meant. Okay. Jesus kind of felt disrespected because he said, "You knew, uh, Philip, you knew me for how long and you still don't get it? I would be upset too. Because Jesus was saying the whole time, I'm the father's messenger. I'm the only mediator. So that means whatever you got to say to God, you have to say it to Jesus. So for you to say, no, I want to see the, uh, the father. Um, No, but you have the next best thing, which is Jesus. The example that I use. Let's say you you uh, have bad customer service and you're in a restaurant and then you're like, I want to see the boss. 
So then the area manager comes and say, oh, I'm the boss. You know, how may I help you? And you say, um, no, I want the CEO. I want to see the CEO. And then the, the manager goes, well, um, I represent the CEO. Whatever you have to say to the CEO, you can say that to me. I will just convey the message. So then the person's like, no, I want to say the CEO. Oh, who are you? I want to go straight to the to the boss. You're just, you know, the help. You're not the boss boss. But then look at that. L let's be rational. Let's say we're that angry customer. Okay, we want to talk to the CEO. That's the one that's in, the, in you know, in charge, in charge, the boss, boss. But isn't it just as good to talk to an area manager or general manager than the CEO? It's probably better to talk to that area manager because they know more about the little things that's being wrong. They know more about how to handle your your bad customer service. The, the CEO is too busy macro managing the place. You see what I'm saying? You you're, you don't care how you know how the marketing strategy is. You care about what's gonna happen with your bad order. That's the job of the person that's micro managing. So it's like you're being disrespectful, saying you want the CEO when wh whatever you want. You can just ask the area manager. You see what I'm saying? So that's the same thing with Jesus. Like Jesus is saying, hello, I'm the manager. Whatever you got to say to the CEO, I'm right here. I could just say, you know, I'm the one that represents the CEO. So that's what Jesus was trying to say. He wasn't trying to say that I'm the father. No, he's saying if you, if you, you know, if you want to see the father, I'm, you know, he's basically right here. He sent me. I'm part of him. You know, I'm the next best thing. You, you know, you would rather go through me than if you go see him, you're going to explode. You see what I'm saying? I hope somebody understands that because it is so simple to me. Okay, now, Deuteronomy 6, 4. I and my father are one. That was just, no, actually that was John 10 30 when he says, I and my father are one. And then Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 6 4 says, Hear, O Israel. Remember, if y'all watch my other videos, L, remember. Israel, Gabriel, Mikey L, they have God's name. See what I'm saying? Whole nother story. Okay. Oh, Israel, the Lord, our Elohim, the Lord is one. <laughs> okay, so people, I'm telling you, people would take this freaking verse and say aha all of this started because of this verse all it's saying that hear the hear our god hear the lord the lord is one and remember what what i was saying what he was trying to say he was just saying hear me I am one. So it's not like you go to Baal, you go to this, you go to that. No, just go to the Elohim. He is the only one you should be listening to. That's what that means. It doesn't say that Elohim or God is one. It's saying, hear your God, your Elohim. He is one. See what I'm saying? There's only one congregation of God. It says, hear him only, the Lord, because he is one. He's not going to flip-flop. He's not going to be in touch with Baal, in touch with this God, in touch with God. No, he's going to be with only in touch with the great assembly of God. Okay, John 10, 34. Jesus answered them, is it not written, written in your own Torah? I say, you are Elohim. If he called them Elohim to whom the word of Elohim came, and it is impossible for the scripture to be broken. Again, you see how Jesus is saying in himself that we are gods. 
Because remember, they were mad at him because he was saying, you know, I am the son of God. So then the Pharisees was like, wait, if you're saying you're a son of God, then you're saying you're a God. People think that the Pharisees were mad because he was saying he was the father. He, they, they were mad because of that. They were saying, they were mad because he called himself a son of God. You know, we, we can't say we are sons of God, da, 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 but that's only by word. Like if you're engaged with somebody, you might say that's your wife, even though you're not married yet. Okay. They were mad because declaring himself to be a son of God, that already makes you a God. If you were, if you were born from a dog, you are a dog. If you were born from a horse, you're a horse. If you were born from a reptilian, you are a reptilian. If you were born from a human, you are a human. If you were born from God, then you are a God. We we, I was born from a human, so that makes me a human. But when Jesus comes back, he's gonna get he's gonna, you know, make me born again. That's what born you know what that's gonna be my next video. What is born again after I make my you know how the word was created video? And you know, that's what born again means that when Jesus comes back, not to rapture us out, he's coming back to give us a new body. Then we'll be born again, born of God. That's when we will become God, when we are born of God. Right now, we're not born of God. I was born from a human, okay? So I'm a human. So that was my point that they were mad because he called himself the son of God, which made him a God. And then he was like, so why are you mad that I'm calling myself a God when even the scripture says that we are gods and we are children of the Elohim? <laughs> it's like now you speak sensitive and they still don't get it. Look, look what Jesus said. Jesus, he would say something that I would say, but you mad because people, if you say, hey, I will become a God, what? You will get crucified. But then, you know, if I say that, you know, they'll try to crucify me, even though it says it all over in the Bible. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Um, you heard that I said to you, I'm going away and I'm coming to you. If you did not love me, you would have rejoiced that I said, I'm going to the father to my, for my father is greater than I. So then the Trinity and the Trinity, they're all supposed to be equal, but one. Well, that's not what my Bible says. That was John 14, 28. Now let's move on to John 13, 16. It's truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master nor is an emissary greater than he who sent him. Emissary is, remember, the messenger, the ones that, that pick, picks up your mail. So the messenger is, and now the messenger is not greater than who sent him. So again, he's saying, um, my father is greater than I. Isaiah 44, 6, thus said the Lord, sovereign of Israel, and his redeemer, Lord of hosts, I am the first, I am the last. Besides me, there is no Elohim. Okay? Again, he's saying that besides it, there's no other congregation of God. There's only one congregation of God. Malachi 3 says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Again, he doesn't change. He 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 was in this before. Now he's a trinity. The trinity, come on, was invented over 300 years after Jesus died. Amos 3 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? 
So this is what the Bible means when it says we are one. But then people still think when it says we are one, they think that it's like we're conjoined twins. Two people, you know, people get together and become one person. That's not what any thinking person should know this. It's like I feel like I feel silly, actually, you know. I don't know if I should be doing this because I really feel silly. Because this should be, you know, self, really, really self-explanatory. But I'm going to keep on. Okay. What, that, what it means to be one with somebody. That means that you're part of a group, part of a family. And you agree. Okay. The, the, the Smith family, they are one. It doesn't mean that Susie, dad, you know, mom, sister are stuck together and make a, a Hindu God. Like, hi, I'm dad. Hi, I'm Susie. Hi, I'm mom. That's not what that means. Okay. That means that, you know, they are one family. They work towards what they want. They agree in one. That's what that means. I feel silly saying this, but it's like, I'm telling y'all, people really do believe when it says the father and I are one, they believe in a trinity. Somebody that's one person, one being like, hi, I'm Jesus. Hi, I'm God. Hi, I'm Holy Spirit. They really do believe that. I'm that serious. That's not what God is. You see what I'm saying? But hey, now I have some verses showing that the Father created through Jesus. Hebrews 1, 2. Has in these last days spoken to us by the Son whom he has appointed heir of all, through whom has he made the ages? Created through Jesus. Colossians 1, 16, 18. For by him were all things created. They are in the heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they are thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Sorry, you know... Your people are not in heaven. He's the firstborn from the dead. That all, that in all things he might have preeminence. So this is a lot, but for the topic, it's, it's talking about Jesus. He created all things, principalities, everything. So for the people that believe Jesus is Archangel Michael. Okay. How can I put this? If you if you are a human, you can't create a human. You can bring forth a human, but you're not creating it. You see what I'm saying? So Jesus, if he created the which it says, he created the angels. So if he created the angels, how was he created? You see what I'm saying? Jesus was not created. He was in the beginning with God. He always existed with God. Jesus is just a lesser form of God. You know, it's hard to explain because we're humans, but in the human sense, let's say it's like a little clone. Jesus is the little clone, is that copy of God but then because he's a copy he's not greater than the original you see what I'm saying there's he's still good enough because they're still made of the same thing but the but Jesus came forth from the father remember Jesus said that all over again so Jesus was not created because the father wasn't created see what I'm saying then Jesus, he it said that he wanted things. Things were created for him. So I bet he asked for a family. And of course, the father has to agree to it. So then he's, you know, the father, the father is so great. 
so so great that's why he needed a lesser form of himself to actually communicate with creation see what i'm saying that'll probably go over your head maybe it's some meditation that you will need to go through jesus always assisted with the father and then the father used jesus as a lesser form of him as a pencil to create things and that way jesus can be closer to the creation because he also made the creation and he he is not as as powerful as the creator which is separated from his creation see what i'm saying hopefully god willing y'all can understand but my point of that was jesus was not created he was always with the father and he helped create all things so that's that's what i'm saying the he, the um jesus has authority okay this is why jesus is also called the father um isaiah called them the everlasting father and this is why another reason why unitarians would say aha jesus is the father well if he created us if he's the boss of us, if he was the one that gave us all the laws, if he's the only one we talk to, yeah, he, we can say he's the father because he created us too, right? So Jesus can be the father. We can call him the father. Jesus thought it not robbery. I have that verse somewhere. But basically, like I said, I'm going to give you all the other example with the manager, Let's say you have the CEO and your area manager. Who do you know best? Of course, you're going to know your area manager the best or your, your general manager, whatever it is. You know, you're going to know them better than your CEO. Your CEO is macro managing. And the one, you know, your department is based on macro managing, which is your general manager. So if you call your general manager boss, hey boss, that's my boss. Can your CEO be jealous and say, hey, don't call her boss, I'm the boss. No, because they're both your boss. The CEO can't be mad that you're calling your general manager the boss or oh, that's my boss. They're both your boss. You see what I'm saying? There's really no difference. Yeah, one is the bigger boss, but <laughs> this that's your boss too. That's the one you talk to the most. To me, that's like the best example I could come up with. If y'all still can't understand it, please pray. Ephesians 3, 9. And to make all see how the secret is the minister, which for ages past has been hidden in Elohim, who created all through Messiah Jesus or Jesus Messiah. Another verse saying he created through Jesus. Now, God gave authority to Jesus. One of my notes. Start out with Philippians 2.10. That the image of Jesus, every knee should bow. Oh, wait. That in the name of Jesus. I think I said image. In the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth. Hmm, what's under the earth? Okay, so it says, you know, we bow to Jesus. It's not nothing wrong with that. Philippians 2, 5 to 6. For let this mind be in you, which was also in Messiah Jesus, who being in the form of Elohim, did not regard equality with Elohim a matter to be grasped. So then people will, will be confused. You know, you know, Jesus says his father is greater. But right here, you know, it didn't matter to him if he was considered equal to God. Well, like I said, your area manager and your CEO manager, they're equally your boss. You might get fired actually from your 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 you know general manager than your ceo see what i'm saying so in a way they're equal but in a way they're not you see what i'm saying that's what it means you know if 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 i have to you know go through jesus to be saved best believe you know that he's he has the same authority 
as the father. That's what that means. They're not literally equal, but then they're equal. See what I'm saying? Because I have to go to Jesus before I can even get to the father. See what I'm saying? John 10, 29. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Again, it doesn't mean there are two people in one body. That doesn't mean that. Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. All things are delivered unto my father and no man knoweth the son, but the father, neither knoweth any man the father, save the son and he to whomsoever the son will reveal him like i said we don't know jesus unless the father shows us see what i'm saying with his with his holy spirit remember we don't know you don't know who is God unless he revealed that to you? We can't be smart enough and figure out God. He has to let you know that he is God. That's what that means. And it also means that nobody knows the father unless Jesus shows you. You see what I'm saying? And it said that nobody knew the father unless jesus his son will reveal him you see what i'm saying now john 6 44 no man can come to me except the father which has sent me draw him and i will raise him up at the last day you see how he's saying last day for y'all that believe in the rapture when do you think the rapture is before the tribulations, after the tribulations, but before God's wrath. So you're saying that you're being raptured out before the last day. But Jesus says at the last day, that means after God's wrath, after the world is ending. So why do y'all still believe in a rapture? Is it because y'all don't care? I'm not trying to be mean, but... I can see if you're all confused and, you know, never thought about it. But once you think about it and somebody shows you and you still choose to believe in a rapture, especially pre-trip rapture, I have nothing to say. Now, James, uh, John 6, 65, and he said, therefore, said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given to, unto him by my father. Again, he's going to keep saying that over and over and over. John 17, 11, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those who thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Again, is that a trinity when all Christians will be part of the Elohim? As you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give everlasting life to all whom you have given him. And this is everlasting life that they should know you, the only true Elohim and Jesus Messiah whom you have sent. That's pretty, you know, y'all should know what that means. You know, I'm not going to explain that I'm running, you know, short on time. Daniel 7, 13, I was looking in the night visions and saw one like the son of Enosh coming with the clouds of the heavens. And he came unto the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. Here, the ancient of days was the father. But there's one verse you can clearly tell it's talking about Jesus. It's not because they're the same person. Remember, Jesus can also be called our father. Why? Because he is the boss of us. Jesus has a boss, the father, but we still have to go through Jesus before we can even go to the father. Hebrews 2, 16 and 18. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore all things in it behoved him to 
be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make recon reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you. Okay. The father, he can never, ever be tempted. Never, 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 never. Jesus being a lesser form of him and being made into a human, he could be tempted. The source of everything, he cannot be tempted. You really, you know, it could imagine the devil tempting the father. It was always Jesus. See what I'm saying? So the point of me putting this verse here, okay, remember I said, the Father is holy, holy, holy. He is separate from his creation. Why? Because his creation is sinful. You have to be just as good as the Father to be in his presence. If you have one little flaw, you cannot go through the Father. So then he had Jesus become our, heart, our, our high priest. So then Jesus being tempted and suffered for us. He knows what it feels like to be tempted and what it's like to be suffering. Because he experienced it himself. You see what I'm saying? So then when you suffered and you know what it's like, you know, to be tempted, then you can better help those people that are also suffering and being tempted. So you see what I'm saying? Jesus, he will be the ruler of us because of that. He's our high priest, but the high priest always has the source of that power, which is the father. But Jesus being the high priest, he can better, better re relate to us. So that's why he's going to be the ruler of the kingdom of God. So it's just basically saying we, you can't worship Jesus as much as you worship the father. It, it, he thought in not robbery if you put them as equal. You see what I'm saying? When you have to go through Jesus and worship him before you can get to the father, it's okay to worship Jesus. He's going to be our high priest. Why? Because he died for us. And he knows what's, what's it like to suffer like we do. John 14, 30. And I shall no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming. He is and he possesses none at all in me. Well, that's good. You see what I'm saying? That means he had no sin. If he had a sin, that means... The devil has leverage over him. You, you know, you follow the devil. So that means he's your master in a way. But you, when you haven't followed him, he has, he has nothing in you. So I put that there because, you know, I, there's, there's really are people that I really think that, that, that the devil is not the ruler of this world. He is. Once we ate from that apple, you know, he became our ruler. And, you know, it says that everywhere, you know, remember, little G's. So there's not one God. Oh, no, there's only one uppercase G. Um, We only put that there so we won't get confused if we're talking about little G gods or the God. That was just invented by us. You see what I'm saying? There's still gods. There's one Elohim, but there's many gods. I... Please, God, let them understand. 1 John 5, 19. We know that we are of Elohim and all the world lies in the wicked one. And we know that the son of Elohim has come and has given us an understanding so that we might know the true one. And we are in the true one and his son Jesus Messiah and in his son. 
this is the true Elohim and everlasting life. Is that some people will still think that the Father and Jesus are the same person. It's like all throughout the Bible, the New Testament, they tell you over and over they're two different people. Like, I'm sorry to dumb it down, but it's really people that still would think that. Now, my other note, the Father is hidden from us. Luke 10, 22. All has been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son is except the Father. I think I already read that. And who the Father is except the Son, and whom the Son wishes to reveal him. John 5, 37. The Father who sent me, he bore witness to me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form or shape. Like the King James says. Do y'all see how it says we have never heard his voice at any time or seen his shape or form? That's because it was never the father. It was always Jesus. Jesus is the God of the Old Testament. The father is hidden from us. He sent his messenger Jesus to us to communicate on behalf of him. He's the only mediator always was it's not you know all of a sudden when he he came to be isaiah 59 2 but your crookedness has separated you from your elohim and your sins have hidden his face from you from hearing you see john 1 18 no one has ever seen elohim all came to be through him the only brought forth son who is in the bosom of the father he did declare see what i'm saying nobody knew the father unless jesus came to reveal him matthew eleven twenty seven. 27 all have been handed over to be by my father and no one knows the son except the father nor does anyone know the father except the son and he and to him he wishes to reveal him Hosea 4, 6, my people have perished for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being priest for me. Since you have forgotten the Torah of your Elohim, I also forget your children. Remember, Adam, our father, him being like us, created like us, he was the one that was supposed to save us. He was the one that was supposed to deliver us from our sins. Or we weren't sinful yet, but he was supposed to deliver us, you know, and, and show us the way. But of course, he failed. So then the next best thing had to do it for us. You see what I'm saying? It wasn't always the plan for Jesus to do it. Of course, God knew, you know, Adam was going to fail. But you see what I'm saying? He had, it was supposed to be one of us to save us. Not really the father. Remember, he's the creator. It's really hard to communicate with your creation. See what I'm saying? So he was... It was Adam supposed to, you know, deliver us to have um, not a, a real body, not a flesh and blood. I'm telling you, if Adam would have just not listened to his wife and just would have took from the tree of life, that's it. We would have been living in paradise. But of course, it's, it's always better. God knew that it's better to know good and evil and to choose for yourself. See what I'm saying? That's what ma That's what makes you a God. When you know good and evil, but you still chose good over evil and recognized your decisions consciously. And that only had to be done, you know, if we were tempted by the devil. That's, you know, there's the whole point to this. So then. Okay, so that was my point. And it says, my people have perished for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being priest to me. So, I put that there to say, hey, 
Remember how people would tell me, you know, what does that have to do with my salvation? They don't care about any knowledge. But he says my people perish for lack of knowledge. It's important to know the things of God. Why? Because if you're if you're blinded by the lies, how can you be guided towards the truth? Whenever you believe a lie, you're believing the devil. See what I'm saying? Okay, now my other note, Jesus is the God from the Old Testament. Let's start with Exodus 3 and a whole bunch of verses. And the messenger of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. And he looked and saw the bush burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. And the Lord saw that he turned aside to see and Elohim called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moshe, Moshe. And he said, here I am. And he said, I am the Elohim of your father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Yishak, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moshe hid his face for he was afraid to look at Elohim. And the Lord said, I have indeed seen the oppression of my people who are in Mizraim. I'm thinking as Egypt. And I have heard their cry because of their slave drivers, for I know their sorrows. And Elohim said to Moshe, I am that which I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent you, has sent me to you. Okay. Some people, Jehovah Witness was saying, where it says right here, and the messenger of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire. So people would say, aha, Jesus is Archangel Michael. Well, is that what it's saying? Okay. One big proof that Jesus, other than the ones I already said, why Jesus is not Archangel Michael, because remember when Gabriel came to tell Mary that Jesus was going to be born? I forgot what I was going to say, but basically, if Jesus was Archangel Michael, how did Gabriel come? I forgot, but I think Michael was in there too, and it couldn't have been Jesus. Other than, okay, that's one thing, but other than all of this, Jesus is not definitely Archangel Michael. I don't know where people get that from. But it says, and the messenger of the Lord... So, it didn't say the mess, the angel of the Lord said this. Even, even if it was to say that, who's to say that was Michael? See what I'm saying? What it's saying is that an angel of Jesus came to talk to Moses. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Remember. That was, this was the first time God was showing up in over 400 years to talk to somebody. Of course, he's going to talk through an angel. That doesn't mean the angel is Jesus. No, Jesus was talking through the angel. And God was saying the message. The father was saying the message. And then Jesus was saying that message through the angel. That's what that is. Why? Because it says... Elohim. So that means that it's both of them. But then, but then sometimes it says the Lord. And the Lord said, I have indeed, because it was Jesus talking to Moses. It was never the Father. Remember, the Father is hidden. He has his messenger, Jesus, say his message. But then when it says Elohim, remember, that's when it puts them together because you got to include the father because he's also the father of them. You see what I'm saying? Hopefully y'all get it. So then I put this here to say it was Jesus talking to Moses. Remember, Jesus said no one has ever seen or heard his shape, you know. So this was the whole time it was Jesus and Jesus is talking through an angel. Not that Jesus is the, you know, an angel, Remember, he created the angels. So if you created something, you can't be part of that. You see what I'm saying? It's impossible. 
So John 8, 28. So Jesus said to them, when you lift up the son of Adam, then you shall know that I am he and that I do not of myself, but as the father taught me, these words I speak and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He is he who is of Elohim hears the words of Elohim. So if you can't understand what I'm saying, it's most likely because you are not of God. Therefore, you do not hear me because you are not of Elohim. Jesus answered, if I esteem myself, my esteem is none at all. Right. You can never brag on yourself. You let others brag for you. Because if you brag yourself, you're saying it because of yourself. But if somebody else does it, then, oh, you know, that must be true because that another person said it, not you yourself. It is my father who esteems me of whom you say that he is your Elohim. Your father Abraham was glad to, that he should see my day and he saw it and he did rejoice. Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So Jesus said to himself, I existed before Abraham. Before Abraham, I existed. So I'm going to get to the to that later on because I'm going to show you the verse where Abraham saw Jesus. Now, 1 Corinthians 10, 4. So Jesus said, no, wait, no. And all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank that spiritual rock that followed. And the rock was Messiah. So the guy talking to Moses, you know, and and leading the people in the wilderness, that was all Jesus. Uh, John 6, 62, then what if you will see the son of man ascending to where he was before? So here's Jesus saying how he was in heaven. Psalm 110, 1, the Lord said to my master, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a full stool for your feet. So this is David saying, Jesus said to my other God, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. This is how it says it. Said to my master the lord said to my master you can take i think they, made, they probably made a, a, a translation error who knows i don't know but basically it's saying how jesus was in the you know david knew of jesus genesis 14 18 and melchizedek melchizedek Sovereign of Shalom brought out bread and wine. Now he was the priest of the Most High El. Singular word for, for God. So I'm pretty sure they're talking about the Father, the Most High El, the Most High God, which is the Father. And blessed be the Most High El who has delivered your enemies into your hand. That was Melchizedek. Jesus is Melchizedek because he was the high priest. Remember, it says he is the most high. He is the high priest of the of the hell of, you know, the most high hell. And then Jesus said, you know, blessed be the most high who has delivered your enemies unto your hand. And he gave him a tenth of all. Abraham gave him a tenth. Basically tithe. But Abraham said to the sovereign of Sodom, which is the king of Salem, I had lifted my hand to the Lord, the most high El, the possessor of the heavens and the earth. So you see how first he said, oh, look at him. He is the priest of the most high, but then turned around and said, you know, I have lifted my hand to the Lord the most high L. So at the same time, he said he's the priest of the most high hell, but at the same time said he's the most high L. You see what I'm saying? He is the priest of the father, but he is also 
the high priest, the most high L. Why? Because they're the same. When Jesus created us, you know, in the beginning, he was also with God. He is also the most high L, but it doesn't mean they're the same person. You see what I'm saying? So that was definitely Jesus. Do you see God, the, cre the creator, coming down and drinking wine and bread with people? That was Jesus. It was always Jesus. You know, and it says right here, you know that had to be Jesus. Because it says, I had looked at the God in his face. But you you know it's not the creator. Because he said it right now. He's the priest of the, the most high L. So it's not the creator. See what I'm saying? That should be, you know, common sense. And probably without the Holy Spirit, you're probably not going to understand it. We need that Holy Spirit. So I put that there, Genesis 14, to show y'all that Jesus was talking to Abraham. Jesus was the God talking to Abraham, the God talking to Moses. Why? Because he was the God of the Old Testament. He was also the one talking to Adam and Eve. I don't know if I showed that. Um, I, think I, I think I'm very, well, okay. This is how King James says it. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and the earth. See what I'm saying? Now, John 6, 45, it is written in the prophets and they shall be all taught of God. We should be taught of God, not men. Every man, therefore, that had heard and had learned of the father coming unto me. And then this is how the scripture says that one. And it, ha it has been written in the prophets and they shall be taught by the Lord. Everyone then who has heard from the father and learned comes to me. So Jesus said it right there. Everybody that has ever, ever learned from God, they learned it from me. So it was always Jesus in the Old Testament. Jesus 322 and the Lord Elohim said, see the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. I think I already read that, but my point of what, you know, I already showed the point that when it says the Lord Elohim, it was talking about both of them, the Lord and Elohim, which is the father. Remember, we don't have a specific name for the father. After, after Jesus came, we, we do, we call him the father. That's the only name we know him by. Now, Genesis 4, 1, and Adam knew how well his wife and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have gained a man, the Lord. I don't know why they didn't say from, but every time they, they have that signal that I showed you is the Lord, not just Lord, which is kind of weird. Okay. And the Lord said, behold, the man has become one of us to know good and evil. And now let us put forth his hand and take also the tree alive and eat and live forever. The King James Version says, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. You see how it's different. Now, I'm going to show how the Holy Spirit is the power of God, not a third person. And then, like I said, people would think that the Holy Spirit is a third person. Why? Because it says, Jesus says he, and he will you know, show you things. But if anybody knows the love languages, Italian, French, Spanish, Greek, y'all would know, you know, how they talk. Like they will describe an object as a he or she. It doesn't mean they're a real person, you know. It doesn't mean that, you know, remember in the Bible how it says, you know, the moon would not give her light. Well, is the moon a girl? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Okay, Acts 2, 4. And they were all filled with a set-apart set spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them to speak. So the Holy Spirit gave them power to talk in other languages. The Holy Spirit is the power of God, not a third person. 
Remember, God cannot be with you directly. He is too holy. We are not holy. We will explode from all the holiness. But what he does, he uses a little power from him and gives it to us. When we have that, it's basically God in us because it comes from God, a little power from God. Just enough where we can handle. You see what I'm saying? 2 Timothy 1 says, For this reason, I remind you to store up the gift of Elohim, which is in you through the laying of on my hands, so you do not be ashamed of the witness of the master, nor of me, his prisoner, but suffer hardship with me for the good news according to the power of Elohim. For Elohim has not given us the power, the, the spirit of cowardice, but the power and the love and of self-control. The Holy Spirit is a little power from him. When you have that, he does not give you the spirit of cowardice, but of power and love and joy. That's not a person. It's a little power from God. The Holy Spirit is, is a little measure of power, of essence from God. 2 Corinthians 4.16 Therefore we do not lose heart, but even if our outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed day by day. So I'm saying... Our flesh is perishing every day. Every day we get older, ready to die, entropy. But the inward man, the Holy Spirit is being renewed day by day. That's how we live through the Spirit of God. You see what I'm saying? But you have to feed it. If you don't feed the Holy Spirit with knowledge and power and love, it, it will disappear. It will get smaller and smaller until it disappears because you have rejected it. Titus 3, 5, he saved us not by the works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his compassion through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the set apart spirit. The, the Holy Spirit is power. You have to renew it. You have to give it power so it will grow. Like I said, if you don't, it will just get smaller and smaller until it flees. When people say, you know, uh, saved always saved always saved something like that that's an abomination because we all know people that has, you know been filled with the holy spirit they praise god or they talk about god but then later on we find out that they gave all of that up they say they're not christian and they're doing satanic stuff so you think that person is still saved even though now they reject god and do and worship the devil there's no such thing as always saved, always slaved. I don't know what that means. That's not that's not in the Bible. The the devils believe. Does that mean that they're part of God? No. You know. The Holy Spirit is the, the is a little power to know God. See what I'm saying? And you have to feed that every day. You know, staying, abiding by the truth, loving God, and it stays in you. But, you know, once you start, you know, staying away from God, you know, believing the devil, it just gets smaller and smaller until it decides that you rejected it completely. Okay, I think I have one page and a half left. Mark 5, 29, and immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And immediately Jesus, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who has touched my garments? Okay, I put this, you know, verse here when it says, you know, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him. What do you think that power is? That was the Holy Spirit that the Father gave him. With that Holy Spirit, you can, you know, heal. You can do many things. And you said, and he felt that little power left him. You see what I'm saying? That's what the Holy Spirit is, this power. And King James, it says, he felt that the virtue had gone out of him. You see what I'm saying? So the you see how he had this much and then once he healed somebody, then a little bit of that went to her to heal her. 
That's not a third person. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. Remember all those verses where I said, where Jesus was like, the Father in me, I am him. Nowhere did he mention the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit was, was a God, why did he ignore a third God like that? How come we don't know about this third God? We only know that he's that he, it is sent by the Father to give us strength. But and and then they're described and never this says what he likes, what he doesn't like, because it's not a person, it's the power of God, the Father. It's like only my people will understand what I'm trying to say. Okay, where was I? I was in Romans 15 and the Elohim of expectation. Fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you overflow with expectation of the power of the set of part spirit. John 14, 20. In that day, you shall know that I am the father and you in me and I in you. He who possesses my commands and guards them, it is he who loves me and he who loves me shall be loved by the father and I shall love him and manifest myself to him. But the helper, the set apart spirit, whom the father shall send in my name. So the father sends the third God in his name. He shall teach you all and remind you of all that I said to you. So it says the Holy Spirit would teach us all. Christians out there, do you, do you hear a third God talking to you? And he says, hi, I'm the Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying? It's like, how if this is the third God, how come we don't know nothing about it? It just says it's a helper. And it's sent from the Father. But if it's the third God, why didn't he send, he send himself? That's what the Trinity is, right? Three separate people in one. <sighs> Lord, make them understand. 1 Corinthians 2.10 But Elohim has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all matters even in the depths of elohim you know if you have the holy spirit and when you're just so desperate for knowledge and you're so desperate to know what god is that's how you know if you have the holy spirit i don't see many people with it they don't care they don't know anything because they can't even watch a two-hour video and study it i watch two three six hour videos over and over until i get it I'm desperate to know about God. I love God. I want to know about him. I don't want to, you know, not know something about him. I don't want to be in the dark. I don't want to believe the devil's lies. We are attacked by the devil, by his lies. We are at war with these demons and the lies. It's like white people don't care. So, where was I? So, how it says that we know him because of the spirit. Remember, the spirit is God in us without it actually being in us. Because if God was actually in us, we would be explode from all the holiness he's, he has. You see what I'm saying? So, the, his spirit is a little power that comes from him. That can teach us things that have a little God in us. That, that way we can think like God, know what he wants. That's our communication with us. So then I got then I got it again about his outward man is perishing, but he is renewed day by day. That's that holy power gets renewed when you feed it. Acts 2 4, and they were filled with the set of part spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them to speak. I already, you know, had that. Acts 13 2, and they were doing service to the master and fasted. The set apart spirit said, separate unto me Barnabas and Shaul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and having laid hands on them, they sent them away. So I put this one here to show how the Holy Spirit works. Anybody come Comment down on this video if you ever heard an audible voice from God and you knew for a fact it was God. 
I don't think none of us ever, ever, ever hear an audible voice. It's never like that. When when you have the power of God, you are like a God. You can figure things out on your own with God. See what I'm saying? Not by somebody telling you all the answers in an audible voice. It's like you start to think, meditate, use common sense. That's how God wants us to find out things. By using common sense, you know, by having a righteous heart, a clean mind. That's how we find out the answers. You see what I'm saying? So it's not going to be an audible voice telling you, hey, da 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 da. It's, it's the power of God in you giving you strength and, and wisdom to figure out things. So this is how it happened in the Acts. What they did, they fasted and prayed. Then this wasn't literal. This wasn't a literal, a literal voice from the Holy Spirit that separated to you unto Barnabas. No, that was basically, we all know God talks through us, but it's never an audible voice. It's something that we know because stuff we study, stuff we see, stuff we fasted, we meditated on, then we get our answer. But it was never an audible voice from God, right? It was, you know, you just know because of common sense. Like, you know, two plus two equals four because, you know, you thought about it, you tested it out, you, you know, you experimented on it to see if it was true, you know, you meditated on it, then you know, hey, I think, you know, two plus two equals four. I think that, that has to be the answer. So that's how it is with everything of God. You consult God, you meditate, you use your common sense, you experiment, you test it out. Then, you know, for a fact, it's from God. That's how the Holy Spirit works. It's, it's the power of God in you. It's not like a, a third person telling you the answers. That's not how it works. Tell me, one of y'all, if y'all ever, if, you know, if y'all hear from God from an audible voice. And if you do, are you really sure it's God? Because, you know, the devils can do that too. Now, Luke 6, 19 and all the crowd is speaking to touch him. The power went out, out of him and healing them all. So again, this is when Jesus was healing. Every time he healed, he was giving them a little power, the power to heal. And he had that power. And once he was using it, you know, it was, it was, uh, the plea, the pleading. Once he prayed and fasted and he got that back. That's how the holy power works. Power. You know. Remember, if you are power, you need energy. You need source of energy. That's what power is. That's what the Holy Spirit is. Is the power of God. Not a third person. It never said, you know, it was a third person there. Psalm 104, 29. You hide your face, they are alarmed. You take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. They don't go to heaven, huh? You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. You see how he created with his Holy Spirit. Because he's not going to do it himself, you know, that's that's inferior to God. Acts 2.17, it shall be in the last days, says Elohim, that I shall pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and also on my male servants and on my female servants i shall pull out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy you see pour out my spirit see what i'm saying ephesians 4 7 but to each one of us favor was given according to the measure of the gifts of messiah so why is it that, you know, Jesus came in the flesh? What about the Holy Spirit? Why he, you know, didn't come like Jesus? It's because the Holy Spirit is not a person. It's the power of God. Okay, this one. But to each one of us, his favor was given according to the measure of the gift of Messiah. He gives us the Holy Spirit you know, according to the measure of what he wants us to have. Remember, it depends on how clean you are. Because if you're dirty, you know, that Holy Spirit is going to get smaller and smaller. You know, 
God knows what to give you, what's enough, you know, what you can handle. Ooh, this stuck. Okay, last page. Philippians 119. For I know that this shall turn out for my deliverance through the prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Messiah. So you see how for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Holy Spirit. See, we get a supply of the Holy Spirit. We get a measure of the Holy Spirit. That's our power. The more Holy Spirit we have, the more truth we have. It will lead us to truth. It won't tell you it like it won't tell you the answers like hey, da da da. da. No. It leads you to the answers. It gives you that power to find it, that power of wisdom and strength. Now, I have four verses showing how we will be part of the Elohim. If you've already been listening and studying, that should be obvious by what I said. But I'll just show you more proofs. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's what being a Christian is. Somebody that is led by the Holy Spirit. That's how you know if, if God is in you. If God, you know... Is agreeing with you if he gives you that Holy Spirit and you have to follow it because what's the point of having that Holy Spirit but then you don't follow it you follow the world no you have to be led by the Spirit of God because that's the spirit of truth that's what's gonna lead you where God wants to lead you and then that shows if you are a son of God if you are led by the Spirit of God for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but he had received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The, the spirit itself bear witness with our, our spirit that we are the children of God. And this is where people will speak in tongues. Tongues, it depends what kind, but usually when people speak in tongues, that's the spirit that God gave you. It's, it's going to start talking to God and confirm, yes, they are a child of God. And then God is talking to your spirit, not you directly, but it's talking to your spirit to give it, you know, that whatever it wants to know. See what I'm saying? It's not a third person. The spirit is a bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So when you start talking in, in tongues, that's your Holy Spirit. Talking to God. Remember, it's not going to talk to you directly. Then once that happens, you're just going to have confirmation of what it is. You see what I'm saying? And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So it so be that we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature weigheth for the manifestations of the sons of God. So you see, we'll be, we'll suffer like Christ, but then we'll be glorified as he was glorified. See what I'm saying? We are heirs, you know, we're still waiting for our promise, which is to have a glorious body and be part of the Elohim. Right now we are nothing. We are just flesh and you know blood that can die any time. But our promise is that we can have an everlasting God, you know, everlasting life and live with God and become a God like him. You know, be like him. First John 3 1 2 see what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of Elohim. You see what I'm saying? If you are a child of God, you are of God. For this reason, we sh the world does not know us because it did not know him. Be beloved ones, now we are children of Elohim. Not technically, but you see what he's saying. And it, and it has not been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. When Jesus comes back and gives us a new body, 
then we all know what, what it's like to be, have a spiritual body and be like him and see him as he is, you know. John 15, 5 says, I am the wine, you are the branches. He who stays in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. Because without me, you are able to do not. If anyone does not stay in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. You see, if you are not part of Jesus, you'll at the end, you'll be thrown into the fire. Not for all eternity is to die. That's the second death. So as long as you, you're not thrown into the lake of fire, you'll become part of the Elohim. And he who stays in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. And without him, we cannot do anything. See what I'm saying? Without him, then if you want to make it to the kingdom without without Jesus, then you would have to be as perfect as he was. Of course, we can never do it. That's why we need Jesus. My last one. First Corinthians 15:49. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, you know, we are made of the earth, so we are earthly. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. See what I'm saying? Right now in this life, we are in the image of the earth. When Jesus comes back and gives us a spiritual body, then we'll be in the image of the heavenly you know, with a heavenly body that never dies, that's not corrupt, that's not made of the physical. See what I'm saying? So, in conclusion, God is not a trinity because the trinity says that God is a closed off being where he is only made up of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's like a schizophrenic God. We're like the charmed ones. That's the only way I can describe them. Remember the charmed ones that that's been that's been here for since the world has came. Where they that's why all the Hindus have it. You know, all cultures that have a god. Where it's three different people, but they're all equal. But they have to they have to become three in one to have one power. Without, you know, if there's only one of them, they can't do anything. They all three have to have to be together to become one person. That's not what God is. God is a family. You know, if you say three and one, that God is only Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as one being. But then you have to say that, that Jesus and the Father are the same person for that. But then as, you know, if you're, if you think like the charmed ones, they are three different people, but they have to work as one. And that's not how it goes. The father is the source of all power. He works by himself alone. Jesus follows the father. So if it's three and one, that means they all need each other just to do one purpose. That's not it. The father does everything. Jesus gets all his source of power from the father. The Holy Spirit is not a third person. It's just the power of God where he uses to, to do everything. So, in another point, it says we are will be part of the Elohim. The angels are part of the Elohim. So, how does that equal three to one? If all Christians, billions of us, I don't know how many there are, but there's numerous, you know, Remember Abraham, Jesus told Abraham, you see all these stars, you're going to have as much kids as this. You see what I'm saying? So there's, you know, billions of us. And then you're, and then the angels, how many of there are, they're also part of the Elohim. Remember, people only think this because they don't know what Elohim really means. God is not a suitable word for the whole assembly of God. The Father has not been made known to us until Jesus made him known. So the whole time we thought that we who we were talking to it was always Jesus. It was it was 
it was in the father. So that's another misconception. You know, I don't know how to finish this off, but I'm telling y'all, God is not a trinity. We did not know who the father, we didn't know there was a father until Jesus told us there was a father. So Elohim, we don't have a specific word for the father. Mind you, we will only know that during the last days slash when Jesus comes back, we will know the father's true name. We, If we knew the father's name, we would explode. Remember, Jesus was the one that taught us to call him father. See what I'm saying? So there's no specific word for the father. When it says there is one God, they're saying one congregation of the heavenly. It doesn't say one being. We all know there's more than one God. You know, Jesus is God. The devil is God. It says we are God's. So it, that's not what that meant where it says there's one God being. It says there's one Elohim. You see what I'm saying? There's only one Elohim. And the Elohim is a family. It's made up, right now it's made up of the Father, the Son, and the angels. But when Jesus comes back, we will also be part of the Elohim. There's only one family of God. That's what it means by there's one Elohim. There's only one family of the heavenly. That's it. That's what that means. It doesn't mean one being, one being called God. That's that's not true. So hopefully, God, in the name of Jesus, please, you know, let my words convey them because there's no trinity. And then when people believe this, you're worshiping another God when you believe in a trinity because your image of God right now is the sun, the spirit, and a dove. That's your image of the, of God. That's, you know, that's worshiping another God. See what I'm saying? Your image of God should be the father and his son. That should be your image of God. But, you know, God bless y'all. I love y'all. And I hope y'all can abide by the truth. And if y'all have any questions, let, just let me know. And I can, you know better explain it you know i'm new at this so i'll get better as time goes on so i love y'all and take care